morning, everybody. Good morning. It's JPR, and welcome back to another video. Uh, yeah, new studio, by the way. That's why you guys haven't seen me on camera in a little while, because honestly, my last setting was a little bit disappointing, much like the settings that we'll be discussing in today's video. Ooh, what a segue! Let's go! Pokemon doesn't have many areas that reappear throughout various games, but the ones that do didn't really hold up that well. To begin illustrating this point, let's discuss the Safari Zone. Wait, wait, weapons away please, let me explain myself. The Safari Zone is probably my favorite recurring area in Pokemon, and it pains me that it hasn't appeared in a new region since Gen 5. The idea of importing rare Pokemon from other regions and making them catchable in a minigame is extremely cool. The Kanto Safari Zone in particular is probably my favorite area in the entire Kanto region. So many incredibly rare and cool Pokemon like Tauros, Kangaskhan, Chansey, Dratini, and more are confined to this exotic area. Unless you go gambling for them, but that's a point for later in the video. No team is truly complete until a trip to the Safari Zone, and no Pokemon experience is complete until you chuck your Game Boy at a wall because Execute ran away after you chucked a rock at its head. Who could have seen that coming? In Gen 2, we didn't have a Safari Zone, but the remakes of HeartGold and SoulSilver added one in after the fact. It was... a little weird and makes for a kinda tedious tutorial, but once properly developed, it does solve a lot of the issues that Johto had with some of its rarer Pokemon making ones that you normally couldn't obtain until the post-game finally catchable in the main story. It may not be the best in terms of execution, but it at least addresses a common Johto complaint, and the idea of a customizable Safari Zone at the very least is pretty cool. Now we move to the Hoenn Safari Zone, which feels very similar to Kanto's, mostly being filled with rare Pokemon imported from the Kanto and Johto regions, including Pikachu, Wobbuffet, Giraffarig, Fampi, and Heracross. Much like Kanto, you're pretty likely to pick up a new team member here. The added layer of the Mach Bike and Acro Bike exclusive areas also gives the Safari Zone a little bit of replay value, which I appreciate. My only gripe with it is that Oras removed the minigame entirely, there's no more step counter, and Safari Balls aren't a thing anymore. So it kinda just feels like an average route, but with slightly more Pokemon variety. Is it more convenient to not deal with the step and ball limit? Yeah, it is. But am I gonna complain about it regardless? Well. Yeah, have you been listening for the last 20 seconds? In Emerald only, this Safari Zone also gets a post-game expansion, opening up even more chances to catch rare Johto Pokemon, which I must say was a very cool addition. The Sinnoh region, however, is where the Safari Zone ultimately met its match. Rebranded as the Great Marsh, unfortunately, there is nothing great about it. From Psyduck, to Bidoof, to Starly, to Wooper, one starts thinking, wait a minute, did I just get scammed out of 500 Poke Dollars? These are the exact same Pokemon found on every adjacent route! The only Pokemon exclusive to this area are Carnivine and Tropius, who, um, uh, suck. The only other mildly interesting Pokemon you'll find here are Krogunk and Skorupi, but the remake's literally underground with them, so there's quite literally nothing exclusive to be found here. Also, getting stuck in the mud every two steps? Who designed this area, Satan? It is quite possibly the most frustratingly badly designed area in the entire Pokemon franchise. And I wish I was exaggerating. Also, why is Area 1 the farthest area from the entrance? This place doesn't make any sense! And then, to make it worse, everyone acts like it's a crime when the Galactic Grunt tries to blow up the Great Marsh. Do it, bro! I won't stop you! And now, this is my last memory of the Safari Zone, because outside of remakes, we haven't gotten another one. The Great Marsh was so bad that it literally killed this tradition from the franchise. We've had more regions without Safari Zones now than with them. Isn't that kind of sad? Oh well, if one thing always makes me feel better, it's gambling. Oh wait, don't tell me they ruined that too. Yeah, Kanto and Johto, those hopelessly gambling addicted regions that they are, did it right. The Kanto Game Corner is a perfect, wonderful little front for Team Rocket's grandiose operation. It's plot relevant, it's the perfect location for bad guys to be raking in money behind the scenes, and you can even participate in their illegal activity by simply buying a very overpriced Porygon. And somehow, we were all okay with this. Even the censored version of the game corner that we got in Heart Gold and Soul Silver is pretty neat. Voltorb Flip feels like an actual minigame where skill and logic is important rather than, uh, well, slot machines. And the rewards are also pretty solid. Great TMs, some decent Pokemon, big thumbs up. The Hoenn Game Corner is a bit of a mixed bag. While it introduces a new minigame, the Roulette Wheel, which I must say I much prefer to the slots, and even has an occasional service day where odds of winning are slightly improved, the prizes definitely take a tumble. 
Pokemon are no longer winnable here, just dolls for your secret base, but some really good TMs like Ice Beam, Flamethrower, Thunderbolt, Psychic, and uh, Double Team are all available here. Yeah, one of these is just like all the others. And once again, just like the Safari Zone, Sinnoh would be the killing blow for the game corner, but this time for multiple reasons. First of all, yeah, I know, the Sinnoh game corner has amazing music. I know that you were already on your way to the comments to type that, I'm well aware. But that one feature aside, this game corner kinda sucks. It goes back to just slot machines, and now only regular items and TMs are sold here, and for exorbitant prices. While the TMs at the Hoenn game corner only cost 4,000 coins, here they cost 10,000. That's inflation nearly as bad as a Zimbabwe dollar. Are we sure Team Rocket isn't behind this operation too? And if they are, could they offer cooler prizes like rare Pokemon or secret base items again? Uh, maybe even one of those sticky, wacky hands that gets all gunked up after you play with it for five minutes but still oddly satisfying? But of course, there's also the legal side of this. Due to changes in how the EU rates games, many versions of Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum had a game corner that was just completely unplayable, which eventually led to it being replaced with a metronome style shop in the remakes. Perhaps the one improvement from BDSP that I can actually get behind. So long, Game Corner. It was real while it lasted. You know, the only thing that's worse than recurring area disappearing is a recurring viewer not subscribing, and that's like 80% of people who watch my videos, so please subscribe. Thank you. Another recurring area I want to discuss is the department stores, which have been phased out since the beginning of Gen 6. These used to be staples in the first five regions, with them usually being located around the midpoint of the game in one of the region's most populous cities. Until Gen 5 happened, and they were like, oh crap, we almost forgot to put the department store in the game, let's just put it randomly in the middle of Route 9. Once again, not to sound like a filthy Gen 1 or anything, but Kanto did it best. The Celadon department store is a landmark that many players have circled on their replays. Mostly because this store is conveniently located right next to the building where you first obtain Eevee, and is the only location in Kanto that sells evolution stones. But even in the off chance that you don't add Eevee to your team, what is wrong with you by the way? So many valuable Kanto Pokemon need these stones to evolve, so you're almost guaranteed to make a stop here. The Goldenrod department store doesn't have as much utility, but similar to the Kanto Game Corner, it's at least tied to the plot in some fashion during the Radio Tower takeover. And hey, if you're really struggling with Whitney, you can trade for the Machop here and admit to the world that you're not a real gamer. Loser. Hoenn's department store is actually quite nice, not only giving you access to powerful TMs, but also a large variety of secret base decorations. The department store also holds a weekly clearance sale where more useful secret base items are unlocked, including the solid board which can be used to walk across the large holes found in larger secret bases. The Veilstone department store is… fine, there's not much else to say about it, but I like its location within the main story, it's convenient. But surprisingly enough, Sinnoh did not deliver the killing blow this time, as it would be Unova's turn to kill off a beloved recurring area. You see, there seems to be a trend right before Game Freak buries an area for good. That being that the last one kind of feels like an afterthought. Whether it's Sinnoh with the Great Martian Game Corner or Unova with the shopping malls. As I alluded to before, this one is very oddly placed in the late game and serves very little purpose compared to the others. They don't sell anything exclusive aside from two lone TMs, Hyper Beam and Giga Impact. There's no stones here, and with secret bases being removed, there's obviously no furniture. It's sad to say, but it doesn't really have a reason to exist, other than being a loose reference to the Palisade Center in New York City. Pretty much the one thing you can do here is change your Rotom's form in the storage room, but beyond that, nothing. And thus, the department stores would close for good. Next up, the Cycling Road. Not much can really be said about the Cycling Road relative to these other locations because, well, you cycle. That's pretty much all you do. There are three Cycling Roads present across the Pokemon series. One in Kanto, one in Hoenn, and one in Sinnoh. And honestly, the retirement of this one kinda makes sense. Cycling, and cycling roads by extension, are a pretty big part of Japanese culture, so having them be exclusive to the Japan-inspired regions makes a lot of sense. But then again, the Tour de France is kind of a big deal, and yet there's like no reference to it at all in Kalos, so yeah, maybe a missed opportunity there. But maybe that's the logic behind most of these areas disappearing. It makes sense that the regions based on Japan would all share similar traits, while regions not based on Japan have a little more individuality. It's an interesting thought, but like, can I just get another Safari Zone, please? And the last of Pokemon's recurring areas, and the ones that lasted the longest, the battle facilities. 
Battle facilities are found in every region from Johto to Galar, usually appearing in the form of the Battle Tower, Battle Subway, Battle Maison, Battle Tree, or Battle Frontier in the cases of games where Game Freak actually tries. Or when they're just trying to tease us. As a gauntlet mode that serves to provide unlimited battles, it seemed like battle facilities would be around forever. Or so we thought. Surprisingly, Paldea became the first region since Kanto to not include a battle facility of any kind. Many anticipated that it would come in the Blueberry Academy with the Indigo Disc DLC, but surprisingly, it too lacks a traditional battle facility. But it does bring back BP through side quests, though they aren't really battle related like before. I don't know if I really miss battle facilities per se, it's pretty easy to get competitive items without them nowadays. So there's not much of a reason to have them unless you really just enjoy battling NPCs that much. I only really enjoyed them when they were part of something larger, like a battle frontier, because beating a frontier brain and earning a symbol or battle print actually meant something. It was a goal to strive for rather than just endless battles against insignificant NPCs. Some of them had funny lines though. And so, that is every major recurring area in Pokemon, and, well, as of right now, they're all kinda... dead. So if you had to bring one back, which one would it be, and why is it the Safari Zone? Be sure to subscribe if you enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time.